The SC-7000Z Desoldering Iron Created by the renowned Japanese manufacturer Denon Instruments, in existence since the 60s, places a high importance on the quality of the devices it produces. The desoldering iron itself dates back to the 90s where it greatly contributed to the success of many companies specializing in the repair of household appliances and television sets, as well as rework departments within electronic manufacturers. The device is so ingeniously designed that it provides an incredible advantage over stationary desoldering irons. The design resembles a gun, making the device ergonomic and comfortable to hold. Its center of gravity and 420-gram weight allows for smooth operation even in hard-to-reach places, reducing strain on the wrist and hand. The device consumes a maximum of 120 watts, while the ceramic heating element located under the chrome casing, cover, consumes a maximum of 100 watts and has a high resistance of up to 1000 degrees Celsius. The vacuum that the device can reach during suction is up to 86 kilopascals, making it a leader among desoldering devices. How to properly use the SC7000Z desoldering iron? First, turn on the device with the on-off switch located under the handle. On the back of the device, there is a temperature control knob with white labeling for temperature ranges for through-hole (THT) components through suction (350 to 450 degrees Celsius) and brown labeling for use with hot air blow (450 to 500 degrees Celsius). Above the temperature control knob, there is a red LED light indicating the device's readiness for use. When it shines, lights, steadily, it means the desoldering iron is heating up. If it begins to pulse, if it starts to flash, it means the heating element has reached the desired, reached, temperature. Now we will show where the reusable flux container is located. As previously mentioned, the desoldering iron is built in the form of a gun, so the green handles are used for unlocking the tank filter cartridge, which we have to pull back like the trigger on a gun. H holding the desoldering iron in one hand, with the other hand, place the thumb and index finger on the green handles and pull back. This will allow us to easily remove the flux container, filter cartridge from the top. On the side of the desoldering station, we have a gear, suction, hot blow control which we set to a position dependent on what we are re-going to do with the device. If the suction, hot blow control is in the lower position next to the suction label, suction will be used to dolder through hole components. If the gear suction control is in the upper position hot blow, hot air can be used to remove surface mount components, but here we must remember to use a special nozzle and sleeve instead of the suction cup for the flux filter cartridge. Holding the device in our hand by the handle, we will have the trigger under our index finger, which starts the engine inside, which generates a vacuum pressure and turns on the desoldering iron. To check the entire length of the nozzle, which has a standard diameter of 1 mm, we use the triple nozzle cleaning pin set, which we receive in the set along with the desoldering iron. On the cleaning pin set, we have will find information on the diameter of the nozzle we want to clean. We match the appropriate diameter of the wire to the diameter of the nozzle. Now that we know everything about the desoldering iron, let's try to dolder something. Let's disassemble a sample through hole THT component. At the beginning, it is necessary to use liquid flux because it has a less sticky consistency than gel flux and evaporates faster, contributing to less wear and reduce filter usage. We pour the flux on the output component we want to remove. We attach the heated nozzle to the desoldering field along with the output and start the heating process. At the moment of melting the solder, it is necessary to check from the other side of the board if the solder is in liquid form. 
We make circular movements with the desoldering iron when we have round leads, and when we have flat leads like on integrated circuits, we perform an up and down movement and press the trigger, starting the suction. Hold the trigger until we see that the solder has been pulled into the rework station from the other side. Remember to hold the trigger for a second longer so that the melted solder is in the rework station tank, filter cartridge, not stopped at the end of the device nozzle. This will make our work easier with the device and reduce the frequency of nozzle clogging. Note that the nozzles are slightly longer than the heating element, and if the operator presses the trigger too briefly, too short, it may cause the solder to stop at the end of the nozzle and start solidifying there, causing nozzle clogging. For this device, we have a wide range of nozzles to choose from depending on what we want to disassemble. Starting with a diameter of 0.8 mm where we can have a slim and ultra-thin slim nozzle, allowing us to approach really hard to reach places where other elements are around. Through the standard 1 mm nozzle in the set, where we also have the option of a thin slim nozzle and a 1.5 mm diameter for large elements, here we also have availability of the thin slim, narrow nozzle version. The desoldering nozzle works just like a desoldering iron tip should be cleaned and maintained properly to increase its performance and lifespan. Extends usage life. We clean the nozzle with a damp natural sponge. It must not be allowed to be dry or too wet. It should be moistened with demineralized water. And after cleaning the nozzle tip, it should be silver, not black oxidized, this will allow us to have an appropriate transfer of heat to the field and removal of the component. At the end of the work, before putting the rework station on the stand, the nozzle tip should be whitened with desoldering wire. The solder will protect the tip from oxidation. The SC-7000Z desoldering station, as you can see, is an excellent tool for unsoldering even the most complex through-hole THT components. It is important to note that the device has an amazing thermal efficiency that allows for unsoldering components on 8-layer and even 12-layer PCBs, making it truly outstanding compared to other available unsoldering devices. Contact our technical sales advisors.